Hey everyone, this is Chris in the middle of quarantine, and I recently uploaded a video playing Grey Wanderer Herluin up against Danger in Dorwinian. Uh, and rather than recording another gameplay video right now, I'm going to break down that deck, sort of explain a little bit about how it works, how I chose the cards that were going to go into it, what they're all doing for the overall strategy, and maybe you can use this yourself sort of build your own Grey Wanderer deck with different themes or different strategies that you might want to choose. So, real quick, running down the basic cards that we get to choose. Hirluin is an Outlands hero, starts with eight threat, one in every stat. Uh, he has ranged, which doesn't matter at all when you're playing solo. And he can pay resources as if they were of any sphere for Outlands ally cards. Super fantastic, it means that all the resources we put on him are very easy for the deck to use. His stats get boosted when we play more Outlands allies. You know, it's the, the usual Outlands game plan. Grey Wanderer forces us to stick with just one hero all the time. Uh, there are ways to get more, so it's not a hard restriction that you keep one hero. Uh, so you could build a side quest deck, you could use Sword Thane, all those things are viable options. But as long as you do this, you get two really good benefits. Uh, one is that you get to play a card in the planning phase without having to worry about a resource match. Uh, but it does have to be the first card, which sort of forces you to think on your feet a little bit about sequencing when you play things. It can be a bit of a struggle to work around, uh, especially if you're not used to playing these decks a lot. Say you just built one and you want to try it out. Uh, it also has an action, costs you an exhaust of Grey Wanderer and one threat. You can either add two resources to your hero's pool, heal three damage, uh, ready them, and you get to pick two of those. So generally speaking in this deck, what you probably are going to do more than anything else is add two resources, and then the healing or the readying depends on where you are in the game and what's been happening. But basically just gives you a way to accelerate out those cards as if you had three heroes on the board, even though you don't. Uh, sort of easy way to think about it, you have the resources of three heroes, you have the actions of two heroes, and you have the threat of one hero. That's the sort of benefit there. Uh, you also get to pick a one-cost attachment from your deck Put it onto the playing area as soon as the game starts, attached to your hero. So for this particular deck, we picked Lord of Morthond. It's entirely trivial to get all of your heroes having one particular resource icon when you only have one hero. Uh, it doesn't say you have to have three, so beware of cards uh, like Thicket of Spears that do require multiple heroes of the same sphere, even though they'd be really easy to play in a monosphere one hero deck. Anyways, and that's just going to give us the ability to draw a bunch of extra cards. It's also not specific to Outlands, so if you play a non-Outlands ally of a sphere that isn't leadership in this deck, you still get to draw cards. So that's the foundation we're running with here. Start off with a good resource base, three resources, pretty useful because of Hirluin's ability, and we draw cards whenever we use them for something that's not leadership. So, breaking down the deck, starting from the beginning, we have all your basic Outlands allies. Hunter Lamadon, Onphalos Herdsman, Ethere Swordsman, Knights of the Swan, Warrior Losernock, and two copies of Forlong. Uh, for those of you counting, that is 17 Outlands allies. This number is gonna be pretty important because it affects the odds of your Hunter of Lamadon hitting. Uh, and of those, only 12 are a different sphere. So you're not gonna draw that many cards from Lord of Morthon during the game, but it does help keep you rolling. Obviously, if you've played the game before, you know what all these do. They're slivers from magic, they're outlines allies. The more you have of them on the board, the better every one of them is. They get extra willpower, extra attack, extra defense, extra hit points. Uh, Forlong gets extra actions, and Hunter of Lamadon can draw you cards. About 
one in every three cards is an Outlands ally in the deck. Uh, it doesn't have to be allies, so there's a couple other cards that you can hit here, but it's good to think when you trigger that ability, you're probably going to put a card in the discard pile. But if you do draw a card, it's going to be one of the better cards for your deck. And all of this is pretty typical. It would be challenging to play an Outlands deck that did not include all of these cards. I'm just going to stack all these up over here. So, so that's the basic strategy of the deck. We're going to get all 17 of these allies out on the table at once. And collectively, between them, I guess we can only have one for long, but uh, between them, that 16 Outlands allies and one Hirluin uh, gonna potentially have 80 something willpower, doing some quick math. Uh, I'm probably wrong about that, but it's, it's significant. Similar amounts of attack and defense and hit points it's a pretty small card package for a lot of value. Next up in the deck we're thinking about is how we're gonna draw cards. And I know we've already got one draw engine online, but in a deck that can generate as many resources as a secrecy deck can, especially one that's in leadership, we need to be able to get as many cards as we can in order to power through them and play. By default, you play Lord of the Rings, you figure a successful quest is gonna be about 10 rounds playing solo. So with the six cards you draw in your opening hand and the 10 cards that you draw just from that, that gets you 16 cards, which is less than a third of the way through your deck and quite frankly means that you would see about a third of these. It's not great, Certainly serviceable. You can make that work if that's the way the shuffle goes, uh, but ideally we'd rather not have that. So how are we going to fix it for this deck? Well, we got a backup copy of Lord of Morthant. I haven't needed it in any of the quests that I have played, uh, but occasionally you will get a quest that forces you to discard attachments, which causes you to lose Lord of Morthant. Having an extra one in your deck means that you can turn that draw engine back on if you want. There's also a bunch of other attachments that we'll see momentarily. Uh, one of my personal favorites, Rod of the Steward. You do need Steward of Gondor on Hirluin in order to be able to equip him with the rod, but by the end of the game, the ability to turn two resources into a card at any time is incredibly valuable. Uh, you'll see when we talk about resource acceleration just how many resources the deck can generate, but even if you just have Grey Wanderer, Rod of the Steward, it allows you to sort of pick and choose. You can draw two cards and have three resources to play with, or you can draw three cards and have one resource to play with, depending on sort of where you're at and what you're digging for. And that flexibility is really useful to get out the cards that you want from the deck. This one is a little bit of a cheat, but I love it anyways. Uh, Timely Aid is an incredibly powerful card. It synergizes really well with the Outlands allies because having more of them on the board at any one time is incredibly valuable. It also allows you to dig five deep for a card. Not strictly card draw. Doesn't trigger Lord of Morthon, doesn't interact nicely with a lot of other things, but the ability to go that five cards deep to pull out what you want and then shuffle away anything that you don't is still valuable. Obviously we have classic favorite, Deep Knowledge. Uh, we can play one during the planning phase thanks to the Grey Wanderer. And our threat is low enough that six threat for paying these deep knowledge, uh, for playing these deep knowledges is not actually a significant cost. We have a small recursion package built into the deck uh, we have two copies of Stand and Fight. These, again, have to be the first card that you play during the planning phase because we have no way of getting a spirit resource icon, but it allows you to bring back any ally that you have lost. Say you defend with Forlong and he died. Three resources brings him back. Same with any of the stat boosters, which is why it's so valuable. 
Uh, we also have two Men of the West, which is similar, but rather than bringing the ally into play, it brings them back into your hand so that you can play them again. This does interact with Lord of Morthon in a good way, but it is limited to only returning Outlands allies. The final piece of our card advantage picture here is three copies of Long Lake Fisherman. It's a two cost ally. Again, has to be the first one you play during a round because of the restriction on the Grey Wanderer. But it, like Timely Aid, allows you to dig five deep for a card that you are looking for. You have to name the cost of that card in advance, but so much of this deck is cost two or cost zero that it can be really easy to get specifically what you're looking for. Uh, I would never name four and hope to get Timely Aid because there's just not that many four cost cards in the deck. But if I need a Steward of Gondor to really get my resource engine going, I can name two. I have five chances to see it if I haven't already got one, which is pretty good odds. And even if I don't find the exact card that I'm looking for, there's a good chance that I'll have a fallback that is good enough. Additionally, you shuffle those cards away. So if you see five cards and the card you're looking for isn't in them, well, you know that was going to be five draws that didn't have that card. And now you have shuffled and they're fresh draws, so there's a better chance of you seeing what you're looking for soon. Overall, it's a lot of cards dedicated to card advantage here. More or less, as many as we have Outlands allies in the deck, it is that important to draw all your Outlands allies. Next category, I uh, mentioned this before, but resource generation. Steward of Gondor and Hirluin is a classic combination. Same with any other hero that uh, doesn't need a resource match in order to play cards. Just having that flexibility and those extra resources is hugely impactful. Here, as much as anything else, because it allows us to use Rod of the Steward, and allows us to play more Outlands allies in one shot to sort of have a more explosive early game. Uh, being able to play a Steward of Gondor on the first round is huge. It means you have three resources to start the game with and then five the following turn, which could be four expensive Outlands allies. If you're playing uh, attack or hit point boosters, they only cost one. So maybe you get a couple more of them in there Every one of those allies draws a card, contributes a ton of stats to your side of the field, just gets you going incredibly quickly. Deck also runs three copies of Resourceful, just to have a little more density of resource advantage in the early game. Uh, we can turn resources into cards via Rod of the Steward and Lord of Morthon, assuming we have those allies. So it's important in general just to generate as many of them as we can. Uh, last resource advantage card here isn't actually ramp in the traditional sense. It is a good harvest. Uh, this is just a safety valve. If you play a card during the planning phase, like deep knowledge, and then you find something else that you want to play that doesn't match Hirluin's sphere, or you play an Outlands ally and then draw into another card that you want, this is a way for you to bypass that restriction for the rest of the phase. And you can't good harvest to play more deep knowledges. That's not how this card works. But it does give you a lot more flexibility than you had before in terms of how you go through playing the planning phase. You could take these out. They are probably not the most impactful cards in the deck, but having them in your hand gives you safe discards and just smooths out the playing experience enough to make it a little bit easier. And the final set of cards, we have some utility that doesn't broadly fit into Outlands, Ramp, or Card Draw. Uh, deck right now runs one copy of Gandalf because I had an extra slot, and sometimes dropping five resources into three cards and a big body for a turn is 
actually really worth it. You could definitely play more Gandalfs in this deck. Would not be surprised if that was effective based on the resources that we could generate. Uh, but I had one slot left at the end, and I figured that that would be a good use of it. We have two Warden of Healings. Uh, these are easier than ever to play with Herewin the Fair. They cost two resources, so they work really nicely with the Long Lake Fisherman. Draw you cards with Lord of Morthon. And Grey Wanderer already gives you an option that allows you to heal Herewin. So if you're taking archery damage, or if you occasionally have to defend a big attack, with your hero, because he has more hit points and more defense than the Outland's allies. That should be fine. Uh, overall, I haven't found the healing to be a problem, though if you don't draw them, your allies could get picked off. But again, that's why we have recursion cards and other options to sort of keep the train rolling. And the final slots in the deck I have dedicated to three copies of Unexpected Courage. As I mentioned before, the beginning of the game with this deck, you are running with two actions every round with most heroes, two actions with Heroin. Assuming that you time your Grey Wanderer enough to take advantage of it. Uh, because Heroin is an Outlands card, his stats are massive. Especially by the end of the game, Having multiple actions out of Heroin allows you to do a ton of work. You can attack for four multiple times. You can defend for four to hold off a swarm of allies. You can quest and then ready up to help deal with combat. Especially if you're playing solo, being able to ready a couple of times around is usually good enough to take care of small enemies entirely on your own allowing you to quest all out, deal with sort of little surging things or other unexpected problems. So Unexpected Courage here is a pretty useful card. I only think I have ever played one of them, however, just because my, my one non-sphere matching card play every round is usually better dedicated to an ally, some card draw, Actually, really just those two things, either an ally or some card draw. Uh, but it's undeniable that if you hold on to Unexpected Courage until later on in the game, you will get a ton of value out of it. So I think there's some, some mixes of how you could shuffle this up in order to be more impactful. Uh, Triple Gandalf, one Unexpected Courage is honestly probably just fine. And Gandalf is a little bit more burst value. He draws you more cards. He helps you deal with more enemy threats. Costs a lot more resources, but they're neutral, so you can play him whenever you want. He's also unique, so he doesn't trigger the Grey Wanderer ability and prevent you from playing other cards, which is always good to see. So that's how I went about building this Herluin Grey Wanderer deck. Obviously, having card draw built into the attachment that you get is quite powerful. And I definitely recommend, if you are going to play a Grey Wanderer deck yourself, that you consider how you're going to get those cards. Uh, resources. Resourceful is very useful. There's a number of other ways to sort of accelerate a little bit. And a number of spheres that just don't need to accelerate that much. But I think that card draw is the piece that is probably the most concerning. You take this sort of idea and you could build it with just about anyone and probably be successful. Uh, you know, maybe Fatty Bulger or Bomber Grey Wanderer is not the most impactful just because of how those heroes work. Uh, but there's nothing that says they couldn't be effective from a card draw or a resource standpoint. All right, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed that little deck breakdown and maybe it has inspired you to build one of your own. Thanks for watching.